Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview. We have a very special guest here, a good friend of mine, uh, Greg Kerr, who has a very remarkable story. So Greg has gone through the ringer. He's gone through the ups and downs. He knows what it's like to be on, you know, the edge of failure looking into internal doom. But now he is like on his own two feet, succe succeeding as an online coach. Um, just, you know, just to give you guys a little bit of background, Greg reached out to me a few months back. Uh, we worked together to really nail down his sales process and his sales system in his business. And within the last few months, he's been, you know, very, very profitable in his business. And it's really cool to see his growth. But, you know, I have gotten a glimpse of Greg's past and I know he's, he just, he's just been down a crazy journey. And so what I want to do is share his journey with you guys and see if it's something that you guys relate to. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lots of trials and tribulations that he'll share with you guys that will be, you know, just very, very valuable on your guys' journey. So Greg, you know, super stoked to have you here, stoked to dive into your story. Um, you know, why don't you just tell a little people about yourself, where you're at currently, what your current situation is, and we'll take it from there. Thanks. Yeah. So I, I've been living in San Diego now for less than a year. Um, I actually, I've been into fitness for over a decade, actually. So um, I'm 28 years old. I became a personal trainer at 18. And, you know, I was involved in, in school a little bit. Um, I went to I went to college for about three semesters. Um, it's crazy to reflect back on all of this. Um, I, I feel like the, the further I get from this and, and the, the further along I get, the, the more moments I have to just sit back and kind of soak it up, soak it in and kind of realize uh, kind of where I came from. But, you know, I started off after high school, I went to college, you know, pretty much like a lot of people do. Um, I didn't really know what my path was. I knew I wanted to do something in fitness. I chose to do the PT route, but college was just not for me. Um, I was in school for about three semesters before I dropped out and then I became a PT. And I did that on and off for years and years and years. Um, you know, I tried to find my way not being in school and work to get by. I did everything from construction to, um, you know, I sold cars, I sold clothes at the mall, um, any job, you know, you name it. And, um, you know, I went through a, a shoulder surgery and decided that I wanted to get back in school and possibly pursue a career in physical therapy. And so, you know, at 23, I, I went back to finish my undergrad and it, it took me a while to finish that um, because I had to work and, and, you know, put my myself through school part time while I was working. And so um, a few years ago, I had finished that undergrad. And then in 2019, I graduated and 2020, I sold all my belongings, everything I owned, and I moved to Northern California to um, go to chiropractic school. Now, I don't come from much in terms of, uh, um, you know, a financial background or anything like that. Um, my, but my goal and my dreams always have been out, always been to get out to California. So, you know, I, I had thought that school was going to be the way to take me there. And I saw it as an opportunity. So I went. Um, and this is really where my life started to get extremely interesting because, um, you know, I, I sold my car and basically everything I owned just to be able to move out there um, and <clears throat> moved all the way across the country and was living in, in San Jose, going to chiropractic school. And that's when, when life really hit me. Um, and, and that's when real life, you know, really hit me in terms of um, being satisfied with my life and, you know, understanding the uh, trajectory of where my life was heading. And, you know, this was very close to the pandemic starting to happen. I had only been in school for um, two to three months and then the pandemic hit. Um, during this time, I was very unsatisfied with school. It, it really was still not for me. Like I said, I had moved out to California simply as a means to moving out to California. It, I, I didn't even know if I wanted to pursue chiropractic, but at that time, um, you know, the pandemic started, I moved back to New Orleans where I'm from and I started to, you know, try and put the pieces together with my life and what I really wanted to do. Um, the pandemic was kind of like a, a huge shake and awakening um, to me and, you know, maybe to a lot of other people too, but certainly for me, it was a, it was a moment of, um, of pause 
and, and, and a moment for me to analyze my life and what, you know, what I was doing and where my life was heading. Um, and, you know, I was basically trying to figure out my life while just living on student loans. I moved back to New Orleans. Um, I don't have a close relationship with my family. So I was basically couch hopping. Like you said, I was kind of homeless. Um, I stayed on friends' couches. Um, I didn't want to stay in Northern California during the pandemic because I just wanted to be at a place I was familiar with. So, you know, during this time I was hopping off of people's couches. I ended up moving back in with my parents who I hadn't even talked to in a year, um, basically out of desperation. I had just gone through a breakup um, with someone I had dated for a decent amount, amount of time. Um, and that was all devastating. All meanwhile, the pandemic was going on and, and just the shit show of my life um, kind of unfolding of, of like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm getting myself into six figures worth of debt for something I don't want to do. I'm going through this breakup, the pandemic started. I'm going to live with my parents who I haven't talked to in a year. Um, and so, you know, after all of this stuff going on, um, I ended up moving in with my brother and sleeping on his couch. Um, he, you know, lived with two other people as well. And from there, it was just, you know, at, at that rock bottom point, I was just able to kind of, you know, objectively look at my life from the outside in and, 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 and kind of look at what was worth doing and what was not worth doing. And um, <clears throat> that kind of brings me to this point. So I, after that, I moved, um, I decided to just pack everything and move to San Diego in the middle of the pandemic. This was on July 4th of last year. Um, kind of cool on, on that day kind of means, I guess, has some meaning behind it to me, but um, you know, I, I moved out here with the goal of figuring it out for myself and fitness has always been part of my life and it's always been my main passion and it's always been what's been on the forefront for me. And, um, I moved out here and ended up getting on unemployment, um, because all the gyms were closed. You know, I wanted, I was going to get a job at a gym and, and drop out of school. I decided I wasn't going to pursue school anymore. I had to make fitness work. Um, and, and I was hell bent on that. And, you know, at this point in my life of being so unhappy and everything, just being a shit show, I decided, you know, I'm going all in on me and, and my intuition and my gut and what I've always wanted to do. And I'm going to write this story for myself. And so I moved out here. Um, you know, I had that unemployment for a certain period of time. And, and then, you know, one thing led to another with meeting the right people. Um, I learned about the possibilities of, of online business. Um, you know, when I met Kelly and she showed me what was possible. And I, you know, from that moment on, I just, I started running with it, man. I haven't looked back since. And, um, you know, I've been able to make my, my dreams and my passions support me now. And so that's kind of where I'm at. So super long story. Uh, it's, it's been, it's been a crazy year, but, um, that's, that's where I'm at currently. I love it, man. No, uh, we, you and I have very similar backgrounds in the sense that we, we both knew what we wanted to do deep down, but we let other people's directions kind of guide us for a little bit too long until, you know, we failed so many times to where there was literally no other option, but to make it, make it work our way. And as soon as you go all in on that decision, it seems like it happens really fast. Right. Yeah. Um, it was yeah. just crazy. So why don't you describe your life now? Like Cause that was just last year you're on unemployment you're kind of just figuring your life out you're like what the hell am i doing you're in this dark place you know i would love to dive deep into the psychology of what your thoughts were back then like dude did you think that there was going to be a way out like what were you thinking and then like you know do you have clearer days now like looking out at the sky sun shining you're happy like what what's the uh, juxtaposition of those two thought patterns yeah that's a that's a great um great topic to dive into so you know it's funny i i you know with new level as Les Brown likes to say um, motivational speaker that I like new, with new levels comes new devils and you know just new challenges in your life and um, I guess I've been handling the stressors of you know this success and my business growing and stuff lately and it's just funny you know last night I I was kind of kind of analyzing my I moved out here with with, <laughs> with nothing no plan and I was not stressed I mean I was living in pure it was just, when I made that decision, it was just pure bliss. And it was the most exhilarating feeling I've ever experienced in my life. Um, sure, there were moments like, all right, you know, once I was out here, it's kind of like, all right, what the fuck am I going to do? Am I going to have to join the military? You know, I, was, I, I, I thought that that would, you know, I was prepared 
to do anything that wasn't my current situation because my, my current situation was not satisfying my life and I wasn't happy. So, um, you know, when I moved out here, I was prepared to do whatever I had to do to, to keep moving forward with my life, whether that had been the military, whether that be driving for Uber until I figured things out. Um, lucky for me, um, you know, I met, I met a friend who was able to, um, you know, assist me in getting, getting on unemployment and that kind of bought me some time, right? And and from there, it's crazy. You would you would think that I I had I would have had more of a scared mindset or a or a freaking out mindset of you know because I, I didn't have rent after like two months. I had enough to pay rent for like two months when I moved here, and then I just so happened to get on unemployment. I just so happened to have a little bit of time to figure things out. Um, but over the course of of time and just building myself, man, I, I really. I mean, the, the self growth that happened from the moment that I walked through the airport on my connecting flight to come here and never leave was, I can't put it into words. That's I can't put into words what that did for me. Um, I, I, I mean, I, it was an exponential, it was an exponential step. And from there, I had no doubt in my mind and in myself that I would figure it out. And um, I really think I put that into the universe and showed the universe that um, I was the real deal and, and I meant business with and with myself and my life and living for me and the universe, you know, showed me people and, and, and introduced me to people that, um, you know, I was meant to be on the same path with. And from there, like I said, um, you know, I met I met Kelly a few months after after moving here and you know, the first time she came over and showed me what she was doing as an online coach and show, showed me what was possible. Um, it, there was no doubt I was going to make it work. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, looking back from there to now, um, obviously it hasn't even been a year. There was a point where I didn't have any clients. There was a point where I was making no money. You know, I had a link for my coaching up and, and nothing was happening. Um, but I still was positive. I still, I still knew um, that I was going to make this work. Um, and there were times where I was like, all right, maybe I will have to start driving for Uber. Maybe I will have to start doing this. And the coolest part about it, the second the unemployment ran out was the second my coaching business started for real. <laughs> I love it. And, um, you know, we can definitely get more into um, kind of the mentality shift in terms of limiting beliefs and whatnot and kind of the struggles I faced with that. Um that's something that's changed tremendously for me. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, you being in my life and, and mentoring me a little bit and um, kind of watching my journey um, with the start of my business. I'm sure you've seen that as well. Dude. I mean, there's so many things that I absolutely love about this story. Like so many things I absolutely love um, because I've been in the same exact shoes. I do think that you had a little bit more on the line than I did because I was a little bit younger when I was kind of growing through this transformation, but there's a, there's a moment in the journey to where, you know, this is how I felt and you can, you can probably relate to this as well. And you, you can bounce your ideas off of this, but there's a moment in the journey where you're, you're really like, okay, what the hell am I going to do? And that's the moment where it's like the hardest because you have all these expectations on your back. But as soon as you just say, you know what, I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to follow the dream and do it for me. Sleeping in your car becomes fun, right? Being broke becomes fun. Right. Like, like figuring out becomes fun. As long as you're moving in the direction that you want to move in, all of the stress, all of the bullshit, all of the things that you once thought were scary now become fun because you're like, okay, cool. This is just the journey to get where I actually want to go. Whereas if you are asking those questions for a destination that you don't even want to go in, that's when it becomes scary. So like, I totally feel you on that when you're like, you know what, last year wasn't even that, that big of a deal because you're actually moving in the direction that you wanted to go in. And there's something, uh, something I wanted to point out about you that's really cool that I think a lot of people don't realize is that you decided to go after the dream first and let everything figure out eventually, right? Most people think they have to figure it out before they go after the dream, but you actually did the opposite. And I actually think that more people uh, need to do that, decide to go after the dream and then figure it out as you go. So can you, can you kind of go dive into like your decision making about that? Yeah, man, absolutely. I agree 100%. And um, I think that's 
that's why I'm having this conversation with you. That's why I'm in the position that I'm in is because I did that because I, I, I really believe in manifestation. I really believe that, you know, I've, I've really been speaking with the universe. Um, and, and, and I don't think that that's, I don't take that lightly. I truly believe in it. Um, it's things that have happened to me in the periods that have, I mean, it's just, it's, it's unexplainable. Um, but like I said before, that moment walking through the airport, I had a connecting flight in Dallas to come here. And I just remember, I just remember walking from that connecting flight to the next one to wait. And I remember the feeling of like, dude, I have no money in my bank account, dude, I'm living off of student loans. I, I might not even go to school next semester. And then I was like, I don't even know what I'm going to do. And I was so exhilarated by that. I was so exhilarated by that because that moment was, was the realest moment of my life in, in terms of encompassing me as a human and my energy and my love for myself and what I want for my life. Like when you do that, you are sending signals to the universe and the universe will start talking to you. And I'm proof of that and I believe in it. And I, I think that's what you're saying that you really believe that more people need to do that. And I absolutely believe that. So because you could wait your whole life for a plan that you think will work out um, and wait for the X's and O's and, 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 and everything that you think you need to be doing and it, it may never come. Mine certainly didn't until I showed the universe that I was ready for it, that I was all in on me and I was gonna figure it out. You know, when you do that, you really attract that into your, into your life. And it's, 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 it really is that simple. Um, I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge thing. Maybe it's, a, maybe <laughs> the decision and, and, and the quickness of it is simple. Um, maybe there's more complexity, but yeah. it's I, hard to put in, it's hard to put into words, man. It's, um, but there's something, there's something to be said of that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I struggle to put it into words, but it's so, it's so real. It's so real. I know exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about, man. And I think, um, I think the inspiration of, you know, putting my book together and putting my book out is actually trying to portray that message to people in the same okay. exact way. Um, but there, there's something I want to dive into about your story that I think is interesting. You have a 10 year gap between, I, so I didn't realize that you became a personal trainer at high school. I didn't realize that you got a certification, became a personal trainer out of high school. It sounds like fitness has always been a part of your life and it's always been something that you wanted to do. Um, why didn't it work out before? Why did it take you 10 years to circle back around to the thing that you eventually started with? Yeah, so I was, you know, I was, um, it took me a long time to, to mature. The crowd I was hanging around with from my hometown wasn't, wasn't the best in terms of being ambitious um, and, and, you know, there wasn't a lot of progress going on going on in my immediate surroundings, um, and everyone's heard that everyone's heard the phrase, you know, you are the sum of the five people you hang out with. Those things, those kind of sayings, um, and I just didn't have. I wasn't surrounded by ambitious people. Um, I had never seen or understood anyone in my immediate surrounding that was, um, you know, very successful with a fitness business, and I wasn't putting my time and attention into um into good resources you know i wasted a lot of time um hanging out with people and doing things that didn't that didn't serve me yeah to be, to be honest um and 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 i just didn't i just didn't know I, I didn't know what was possible i used to think that um you know i'll say this one of my one of my biggest regrets um from my past is that i did not start you know documenting earlier I, I go to share stuff on social media and it, I wish I could show people where I started because it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I started from, I mean, I, I, I was so skinny. I had, I, I didn't have any, any basis to start off. I started from scratch, just like everyone does. I wish I could show that. Um, but to kind of answer your question, I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't have any good guidance. And so I was just trying to figure my way out myself. Um, as best as I could. And that's, that's, that's why I fell into all these different avenues of working this job and this job and this job. I've always been very good with people and, and kind of connecting with different people and, and, and um, putting myself out there and allowing other people to help me get to this spot and then get over here. 
and then you know I would meet this person and 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 then I'd end up over here and and I just I just kept going and going and searching and searching and um you know that's actually that was actually going to lead to my next question is like at that point in time what was your direction like what were you using for direction was it like you know your parents telling you what to do was it like opportunity seeking of like what's the best case scenario of opportunity and then move towards that like what was your compass guiding you through life at this point of time um like I said in my early years I don't think I was I was mature enough to think about my future really unfolding I was just focused on enjoying the now and getting by and working on my craft in terms of my body and my fitness and um getting by obviously like training people but it wasn't I, I I was never looking far enough into my career and things like that so in terms of in terms of direction and what was driving me it was purely based on like passion and pleasure and getting by it was all I knew you know I don't come like the people I, I didn't grow up with anyone in a super financially strong position or ambitious like I'm saying so all all I knew was like worrying about money and getting by like I don't think my brain understood possibilities Mm -hmm. until I built that into myself into my subconsciousness of you know it's crazy I was sitting down writing um earlier last uh this morning and last night and there's there's a there's a saying I used to say to myself a mantra before bed and and I started this in my mid to early 20s. And that was, you have what it takes, and it will be so I didn't know what direction my life was heading. And I didn't really like have um, a grasp of that. And but I knew there was more to I knew I knew there was something for me. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was going to become enough t- to do that. So I don't have a tangible answer for you there. I, I, you know, I was very lost at points. And and like I said, I was trying to just kind of jump to the next step and get to the next step and the next one. And eventually um, that all led me to a very low point. And at that very low point, I was finally able to assess my life and say, let's go, let's go figure this out in the right place. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think is uh, what's guiding you now? Because you seem to have much more control. My just my passion, my love, and my intuition. Yeah. Just simply working off of that, man. I don't. I don't think I have to do anything a certain way. Um, I've seen possibilities of how to create a life for myself by utilizing the passion that I have, the passions that I have. Um, and it's it's just it's just about pursuing that as as hard as I can, and continuing to to make myself proud in any way. You know, that's that's maybe that's the best answer I could give you. Is my direction came from just wanting to be somebody, dude. Like I. I like Rocky's my favorite movie when he lays there and he, and he's just like, yeah, I just, I just want to go to the distance. Like, I just don't, I just, I don't want to be another bum from the neighborhood. Like I just always wanted to be something and like prove to myself. It wasn't, it wasn't about anyone else. Like, I'm not like pursuing, like, sure. I have goals for like my Instagram and things like this and that, but like, it was always like self-actualization for me. Like I just wanted to prove myself that I was somebody and like make myself happy and, and like love myself mm-hmm. able to love myself that's hard like a lot of people that's a, that's a conversation I think maybe um a lot of people don't have it themselves honestly and they don't face honestly because if they did a lot more people would would um they would take that risk that you said without having the plan because mm-hmm. that's ultimately what I jumped you know into into the mystery land the unknown it's what I jumped there for to figure out and do something that would make me proud and like fulfilled. So that's, what's driving me now still. Um, it's interesting because I'm trying to search for grit and I'm trying to redefine that now. Um, obviously I haven't, I haven't hit this like massive 
success. But at the end of the day, like I kind of have going from rock bottom and zero is making zero dollars to making eleven thousand dollars last month. So at the same time, it's like, damn, like I did like that was the goal for so long was just to like get to that point. So I'm I'm currently I'm currently kind of redefining that. But ultimately that's I think my driving force and my driving passion. I love it, man. And dude, I would I would argue that you have coined the term made it, right? Um, yeah. You know, I think you you said that like, you're not this like huge multi-million dollar success, but I tell people all the time, like, dude, the moment you make it is when you have freedom over your time and energy and you have security in, in, your, in your life, right? And you've reached that point. Um, I put up a, a story on my Instagram the other day that talks about, you know, the ending of my book and talks about how the ending of my book actually ended at my first 10K month. Right. And then there's about a two to three year gap from that moment to now where I, where I don't talk about anything because that first 10K month is the end of the journey. In that moment, you gain freedom over your time. You gain freedom over your energy. You become your own boss. You gain direction. And like everything after that is just more money in the bank. It really doesn't make a difference. But like when you have those things, that's when you make, that's when you truly make it. So I would, I would consider you a success story, uh, which is incredible. But uh, I have an interesting question that I want to ask. Um, meeting Kelly, what was that like? Because I know if I was in, when I was, if I was in a position to where I was broke, didn't really have any direction, was trying to figure it out. And I met Kelly, which is, you know, Kelly's a superstar, right? I would feel inferior. I would feel insecure. Like, how did that, you know, how did you feel in those moments? No, man, I never, I never felt like that. And uh, it was never perceived in that way. And we kind of had a similar conversation of like, analyzing that um the other night and uh we talk about when we met and things like that frequently um it's like lady in the tramp story but it's not uh it was never like that man and I never had I, I, when I tell you I you know I, I'll say it again and I repeat it but the the, I, the moment in that airport I was never the same person ever again dude ever and 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 <laughs> so it was never that it was never that I was never worried I was never lesser I never viewed I didn't view myself like I, I, I fully stepped into me um mm -hmm. but but you know it, you know she came over we were just meeting each other for the first time formally and um we were both working I just asked if she wanted to come over to, to essentially work I think I was editing some stuff um you know for Instagram and she was doing some stuff for clients and, and I asked her to show me what she was doing and she showed me and I was like, this is what you do for, for work. And obviously she was very successful at it. And, and I, like I said, I saw the possibility and I turned and I started running real fast knowing that, cause it, cause I didn't know, I had no idea. I didn't know you could use Instagram for a business. I thought it was just something not, not to say that like people got lucky into um, with like growing it and being successful as, but I, I just didn't, I don't know that I knew. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know it was possible to just do. And it simply is. Anyone can do it. Dude, I like, love you it. You don't have to be special. <laughs> I think uh, I think the key thing to highlight here is, again, your confidence in yourself came from the moment that you took over the decisions in your life or you took over control. And it didn't even matter about the end destination. It didn't matter about the results. It didn't matter about anything you had. It was just, it was control. It was you deciding where your life was going. And at that moment, you became confident in who you were and right. everything else follows. I, I love that, man. Yeah. Um, but cool. Let's wrap it up. I will say this is probably the most, like, the best interview I've done, the most fun I've had in an interview. There's so many correlations between you and, and my story is that I, I love. Um, but let's go back to your younger self, right? Let's say that there's some kid out there that's, you know, lost and doesn't really know what's possible. And, you know, what would you say to your younger self who's just getting started, who wants to be, you know, somebody who wants to be successful, but just doesn't really know where to start, doesn't even know the possibilities? Keep, keep the... Um... It would be to just build the belief in yourself. Like I said before, I mentioned earlier in the podcast, I would sit in my rinky dink apartment, my cheap ass apartment in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the air, the air condition would cut off sometimes. I could walk into my bathroom and touch the ceiling. This is how high the ceiling was. Um, I would sit there at night and I would meditate every fucking night. And I would say out loud to myself, 
you have what I have what it takes and it will be so I have what it takes and it will be so I have what it takes and it will be so and I didn't know what that meant I didn't know what it was it will be so I had no fucking clue but I knew that I was building the mindset to not be just another bum from the neighborhood to be more for myself to make myself happy and proud so to somebody out there who feels lost in direction keep building yourself take the time to build the belief um, and take the time for self self isolation um, now i don't want i don't want this to be taken as don't utilize people around you as i mentioned before um, i've utilized tons of people to get to this point I've met people and they've helped me get to a certain point. I would meet someone else. And, you know, I've, I'm not here um, without the help of, of certain people who I've met along the way, but people need to have the conversations with themselves inside. People need to sit down and have the conversation. Are you happy? Do you love yourself? Are you working towards this thing? So just building on that, taking a step each day to make sure that you're going to be proud of yourself and that all all starts with that inward conversation that you have with yourself on a daily basis and life gets busy and sometimes you might not have time for that conversation but you better make time because if you want your life to change you have to have that conversation continually and you have to be able to analyze what's going on up here because this is what dictates your life what's going on in your head the thoughts you have towards yourself and your belief for more because the second that you don't believe that there's more, the universe is going to say, okay, well, you know, I guess that's it. So it, it's, it's, it's all up here. It's all up here. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. No, seriously. It's, I think uh, you just struck something in me that I think is a, is a major ingredient to success that I don't think I've ever talked about before, but self-isolation, you know, yeah. even if it's just five, 10 minutes a day, but just really just, you know, talking to yourself, getting comfortable with yourself is something I do every single day that I, I don't think I've ever like articulated it, but you know, even just going for a walk and leaving your headphones at home, mm -hmm. that way you're walking with your thoughts. It's, it's very, very important. So yeah. dude, I, I'm so glad that you said that. That is uh, that's powerful stuff. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. I, I, that's, it's just so that, that that's huge. I mean, I lived by myself for years. I moved at my parents' house at, at 21 and I lived by myself. Um, I had a roommate here and there. Um, but for the most part from, um, you know, over half of the time spent from 21 years old to 27 years old was living alone. And I can tell you there was a lot of, of, of time in my own thoughts and that made all the difference. Wow. Having those conversations. I love it, man. Well, Greg, I seriously appreciate you hopping on. I think your story is, you know, absolutely amazing. I think it needs to be shared um, more often. So I really appreciate you, um, you know, sharing it. Do you have any final words for the listeners? Any, anywhere we can reach you or find you, your Instagram profiles or anything of the sort? Yeah, my Instagram is Greg Care Fit. Um, so you can follow me there. Final words. <sighs> it's all in your thoughts thoughts yeah. become things that's all i, I got <laughs> i love it man thank you so much man we'll end the episode here and uh we'll catch you guys in the next episode awesome